Okay, so in today's lecture, I'm going to give you some more details, detailed steps to get to the ideal diodification. So in the last movie clip, I have briefly uh, talked about the major steps to get the dio ideal diodication. So the very first step number one was to solve the minority carrier diffusion equations, which is the second order partial differential equation with respect to the delta n sub p and delta or delta p sub n. So here in the delta n sub p indicates the excess electron concentration in the p side as a function of x and Va applied voltage across the pn diode. And what about the delta p sub n as a function of x comma v sub a? Yeah, that means the excess delta, right? Excess whole concentration p, right? In the n side because of the subscript n as a function of x, the displacement across the pn diode and Va, which is the applied voltage. So to have the solution form for delta p n sub p and delta p sub n, we should solve the second order differential equation, which is named as minority carrier diffusion equation. So as you know, to solve the differential equation, we should have a, a few boundary conditions. So in the p side of the pn diode, we're gonna get and estimate the boundary conditions at x of minus xp and x of minus infinity. So that means the edge of the depletion layer in the p side and um, most left hand side of edge in the pn diode or p side that is corresponding to the minus infinity of x. And what about the n side? Two boundary conditions, right? So depletion edge in the n side, which is uh, x of xn and uh, most right hand side edge of the pn diode so if i draw the just simply cross-sectional view of the pn diode we're gonna have a depletion layer in the middle and that is minus uh, xp and that is corresponding to xp uh, metallurgical junction is at the place of origin so here x is minus infinity and this h is x plus infinity so p and n okay so we're gonna have some boundary conditions here and there okay to complete the solution form for delta n sub p and delta p sub n and the second step was to determine the minimum car minority carrier current densities in quasi neutral regions. So quasi neutral region is corresponding to this region in the P side and that region in the N side. So as we have learned, uh, the, the all the voltage drop that we have applied across the PN diode is dropped uh, into the depletion layer. So uh, almost zero electric field is formed in the quasi-neutral region so that the current component in the quasi-neutral region is only diffusion current density so diffusion current density can be written as this unit charge times diffusivity times how much dop doping concentration gradient has been formed so using this diffusion current density equation we can estimate the electron current density in the end side so similarly, the diffusion current density in the P side as well. The last step, step number three, is we can estimate quantitatively the total amount of uh, current density across the PN diode for a given uh, externally applied voltage V sub A. So to get uh, the total current density, we can uh, sum two diffusion current components at X of minus XP and X of xn so uh, previously i mentioned that the total current density is constant throughout the diode okay so the electron current density component right at act right at the edge of the depletion layer uh, is has been well kept uh, when that is uh, the another electron current density at x of x plus uh, n so since j sub n for a given applied voltage at 
x of plus xn is identical to the j sub n for a certain given bias voltage at x of minus xp because there is no recombination generation occurred throughout the depletion layer so that this equation can be jn vA when x is xn plus jp vA when x is xn. So at the same position, if we can sum up electron current density plus full current density, we're going to get the total current density. Okay. However, this current density value is identical to the current density at x of minus xp. Instead of this, we're going to use this component. And then uh, from the second step, we can take advantage of using this equation, right? So by plugging in the x minus xp here in, then we are going to uh, calculate this electron current density at, at x of minus xp. Okay, so from now on, we're going to dive into three major steps to obtain the ideal diodication. So the very first thing is uh, we would like to write down the right equation to indicate how much a hole concentration and how much electron concentration was there at uh, x of minus xp or x of xn. So let's uh, take a look at take a look at the lecture note here. So take into account the equilibrium when the applied voltage is zero. Equilibrium carrier concentration in the P side as well as in the N side. So in the P side, the whole concentration in the P side at thermal equilibrium. So simply speaking, PP naught. Okay. So PP naught where uh, at x of minus xp. So always imagine where you are. So for a given PN diode, you know the metallurgical junction is x of zero. The edge is minus xp here. The depletion layer edge on the n side is plus xn. Okay, so now we are talking about at x of minus xp, how much hole concentration in the p side at thermal equilibrium is available. So, right at this position, how many holes are available there? Because this is a p side, so p side is doped with acceptors, so acceptor concentration is Na. And in the peace side, definitely there is a certain amount of the donor's concentration. However, Na is much, much higher than N, N sub D in the P side, right? So instead of Na minus ND, we can simply say that there is a, a too, too much acceptor concentration. So the whole concentration in the P side, majority carrier in the P side, uh, is governed by the how much acceptor concentration has been in, uh, included and injected in the p-side. Well, if I'm writing down some more exact uh, solution for PPN, that should be Na minus Nd in the p-side. However, this Nd, the value of Nd in the p-side is much, much smaller than the acceptor concentration in the p-side. So that's the reason why I didn't write down any other additional terms here. So Na in the p-side. Is identical to the majority carrier concentration, which is a whole concentration in the P side at thermal equilibrium. All right. What about the minority carrier concentration in the P side at x of minus xp? I mean, the, at the edge of the depletion layer, how much electron concentration are available in the P side at thermal equilibrium? Thermal equilibrium means uh, applied voltage is zero. Okay. So, what is the value? Previously, formally, we have learned that the uh, mass action law. At thermal equilibrium, the electron concentration ends up not, so not indicates explicitly the equilibrium state. Okay, so electron concentration at equilibrium times whole concentration at equilibrium is equal to the Ni square. So Ni means the intrinsic carrier concentration or intrinsic electron concentration in silicon. For example, at room temperature, N sub I is 10 to the 10, okay? So using this mass action law, we can estimate the N sub P naught in the P side. What is it? Yes, N sub P naught is equal to P P naught 
ni square. So ni square is equal to np naught times pp naught. So here, uh, just uh, include the position and the region. So we are now we're talking about the p type, uh, p side in the pn dive. So here in, I have included a subscript of p here and there. Okay. So again, np naught times pp naught is equal to ni square, which is the max section, max section law. Okay. So here, as a way is actually pp naught, but previously we have included, we have concluded that na is equal to pp naught. Okay. So instead of pp naught, I have used the uh, n sub a here. Okay. So once you know the acceptor concentration in the p side of the pn diode, you can estimate pp naught and np naught where? Yes, at x of minus xp, at the edge of the depletion layer. What about the end side? You can do the similar works, okay? Uh, the majority carrier concentration in end side, which is the electron concentration in the end side at the normal equilibrium, where? At x of xn, in other words, at the edge of the depletion layer. So n and naught is equal to n sub d. Basically, that should be nd minus na uh, in the end side. But in the end side, you know, the acceptor concentration is much, much smaller than the n sub d, so you can ignore this second term. Okay, so n and naught is equal to nd. What about the binary carrier concentration in the end side? Yeah, whole concentration in the end side at the normal equilibrium where? At the x of xn, at the edge of the depletion layer uh, of the end side is equal to what? You can use a mass section law gate. So mass section law said n naught times p naught is equal to ni square, but now we are in the n side, so you can include a, a, one more subscript here and there. So n and naught times p and naught is equal to ni square. But since n and naught is identical to the n sub d, so you can write down the equation for p and naught which is ni squared divided by n sub d, okay? So this and that we got. All right, so take a look at this sentence. Uh, for when, when the applied voltage is not zero, I mean the no, at non-equilibrium state, previously I mentioned that equilibrium, right? At thermal equilibrium, how much whole concentration how much electron concentration, how much electron concentration, whole concentration in each side, you know, we have derived and we can write down the right equation for each. But now, uh, let's apply non-zero applied voltage across P and diode. What would be happened? As we have learned, uh, let me write down here. As we have learned, if oops, if forward bias is applied across the PN diode, uh, many holes would diffuse into the N side and many electrons would diffuse into the P side. Okay, but once hole is arrived in the N side, this hole is treated as or is thought of as the minority carrier is in the end side. So this minority carrier, the amount of minority carrier in the end side, the total amount of injected holes into the end side is quite large uh, compared against hole concentration at equilibrium in the end side. I mean, the, the injected hole uh, into the end side, the number of holes into the end side which is injected from NP side uh, should be much, much higher than the whole concentration in the N side at thermal equilibrium. So minority carrier concentration has been modified and changed a lot too much. However, think about the electron concentration in the N side. I mean, the majority carriers concentration in the N side would not significantly affected by this injected hole. In other words, n sub n 
is identical to the ends of n naught. So naught means atomal equilibrium. Uh, no naught means uh, when VA is non-zero at non-thermal equilibrium state. So NN is equal to NN naught. Why is that? The hole is injected into the N side from P side at a very low level which is denoted as a low level injection, right? So once, if low level injection conditions is very dominant in the quasi-neutral reasons when VA is non-zero, then in the P side, the majority carrier concentration, which is the whole concentration, should be identical to what? Yes, PP naught, okay? So PP is equal to PP naught because in the P side, the majority carrier, which is whole, whole concentration is not modified at all. That means PP is equal to PP naught. At equilibrium, at non-equilibrium, whatever it is, the majority carrier concentration in the P side, right? Whole concentration in the P side, in the P side, P time materials majority carrier is whole, right? So PP is equal to PP naught. And previously we have derived that PP naught is equal to NA, okay? So here in, take a look at the PP is equal to N sub A. But where? Yeah, at X of minus XP, at the edge of the depletion layer. But however, this equation is still valid. Uh, all the positions in the quasi-neutral region in the P side. Similarly, we can derive this equation. N sub A, what, is, what does it mean? Yeah, electron concentration in the N side. So majority care concentration in the N side is what? Yeah, is equal to N sub N naught, right? Because, because of the low level injection, right? Low level injection indicates that the majority care concentration is not affected a lot because of the injected minority carriers, okay? So from the perspective of uh, electrons and antimaterial, the electron concentration in the N side at X of Xn at the edge of the depletion layer is not significantly affected a lot compared against the electron concentration in the N side at thermal equilibrium. So Nn is Nn naught because of the low level injection. And previously we estimated that N sub N naught is equal to Nd. Okay, so Nn is equal to Nd when, yes, Va is not equal. I mean, the fold bias, reverse bias is applied across the PN diode. The majority carrier concentration is still the same as the majority carrier concentration at thermal equilibrium. Okay, so whatever the state is, thermal equilibrium or non thermal equilibrium, remember that the majority carrier concentration is not affected significantly. Okay. Uh, before moving forward, let's derive uh, and try to figure out the meaning of the a new law named as law of the junction. So take a look at the sentences that I have brought and written in this lecture note. The voltage V sub A, which is applied across a PN diode, uh, should fall down uh, mostly across the depletion region. In the diode, uh, in the ideal diode analysis, one of the main uh, assumptions was the old voltage that I have applied across the PN diode is dropped 100% across the depletion region. Okay, so that is the same same sentence that uh, the low level injection conditions still prevail is very dominant in the quasi energy regions. So from this fact, we can derive. Uh, law of the junction. So take a look at here. We can draw two different quasi fermions level in the depletion region. So here and there. Now this is a quasi neutral region in the P side, and that is quasi neutral region in the N side. And herein, uh, you can see that F sub P quasi fermion energy level in the P side, and that is quasi fermion energy level in the N side. Well, instead of uh, capital F sub N, uh, here in I have used the E sub F, and so it doesn't matter which one is 
uh, which one you used. Okay. Um, so now take a look at how much energy difference has been formed between two quasi Fermi energy level in the PN diode. Yes, the energy difference between two Fermi energy level is corresponding to the how much uh, applied voltage that you have uh, for the PN diode. Okay. So EFP or FP okay. FP minus FN is identical to the Q times VA. Okay. So remembering the 60 millivolts low that I have talked, uh, you can estimate the whole concentration in the P side and electron concentration in the no no electron concentration in the N side and whole concentration in the P side. So P is equal to N sub I times exponential EI minus EF. But instead of EF, I have used the quasi Fermi energy level in the P side. What about the electron concentration in the N side? That is described with the NI times exponential EF minus EI over KT. But instead of EF, I have used the quasi Fermi energy level in the N side. So let's take a multiplication bet uh, between P and N. So P times N is equal to what? Yeah, NI, NI is common, so you can take it two times, so NI square, and exponential blah, blah, times another exponential to the FN blah, blah, blah. So you can sum those two terms together, right? And then you can clearly see that E sub I, intrinsic Fermi and its levels are canceled out. Then the left thing, the terms left behind is FN and minus FV. So you can end up with this equation. So what was the meaning of the energy difference between two quasi Fermi energy level? Yes, that is corresponding to the Q times V sub A. So here in, just plug in the Q times V sub A, then you're gonna get this equation. So take a look at the form of this uh, equation, named as law of the junction. Quite similar to the mass action law, right? Mass action law said the whole concentration at thermal equilibrium times electron concentration at thermal equilibrium is identical to the Ni square. That is mass action law. And now here, I didn't write down the not here because now non-zero voltage has been applied across the PN diode. Then using quasi-fermi energy level concept, we can still keep the equation for uh, estimating the whole concentration and electron concentration by using this equation or with the help of the how much Fermi energy level has been uh, placed away from the intrinsic Fermi energy level or mid gap. So once you know your quasi Fermi energy level uh, exists where uh, away from the uh, intrinsic Fermi as well, you can simply estimate the whole concentration or electron concentration, right? So that was named as 60 millivolts low that I have, that I have named it. Okay, so remember this uh, mass action low as well as low of the junction. The only different thing is this term, exponential QVA over KT, okay? Instead of writing down Q here, if you move the unit charge value here then VA over KT over Q. KT over Q is named as thermal voltage. Okay at room temperature thermal voltage is a 60 millivolt or about just a 25 or 26 millivolt. Okay so just remember those are two equations. Okay let's go back to the ideal diode analysis again and here um Let's try to write down the excess carrier concentration at the edge of the depletion layer. I mean, the in the P side, I would like to write down the excess carrier concentration. I mean, the ends of P at X of minus XP. Yeah, I would like to write down a certain equation for delta N sub P. What about the N side? Yes, delta P sub N at X of plus xn. I would like to write down 
the equations for this and that. So the very first thing that we have already known is a PP. What was PP? Yeah, whole concentration in the P side. But PP is identical to the PP naught because of the low level injection, right? Again, the majority carrier concentration is not significantly affected by the injected minority carriers. Okay, so PP is equal to PP naught, and PP naught was N sub A. Okay, what about the NP? Now you are ready to use a law of the junction. Okay, use a law of the junction. What was the law of the junction? Yes, PP times NP is equal to NI scale exponential QVA over KT. Okay, so go back to the last slide again here. Here, I'd like to designate which side I'm talking about. PP times NP is equal to NI square exponential QVA over KT. Even I can write down PN and N is equal to NI square exponential QVA over KT. You know the meaning of the subscript, right? Which region I'm talking about. Okay, PN and N, P sub N times N sub N is equal to NI square exponential QVA over KT. Okay, so remember those two equations. Okay, here. So NP, this guy, right? So therefore NP is equal to what? PP in I square exponential QVA over KT. But PP is identical to the PP naught and which is N sub A. So now you can see that NA, NI square, and the exponential, okay? All right, then now let's move on to the next one. Uh, previously, NI square divided by NA is equal to NP naught. What was it? Yes, let's go back to the slide here. Yeah, NP naught. So this is a mass action law, right? P, whole concentration in the P side at thermal equilibrium times Electron concentration in the P side at thermal equilibrium is equal to what? Yes, NI square, right? If you erase the subscript P, then simply whole and electron concentration at thermal equilibrium, right, is equal to NI square, okay? So previously, NP naught was NI square over NA. So let's use this equation here. Yeah. Right, NP naught, electron concentration in the P side at thermal equilibrium is equal to NI square over NA. But now you can clearly see that NI square over NA here in, right? So just plug in here. Instead of NI square over NA, you can use NP naught. So there we go, NP naught, exponential QVA over KT. So let me erase all, all of my notes to clearly see that the NP at the edge of the depletion layer is equal to what? NP naught, right? So we would like to know the electron concentration in the P side, the minor carrier concentration in the P side at one, when the VA is not zero. I mean, the when the forward or reverse bias has been applied across P and diode, uh, how much electrons are available in the P side, right? To know that. How much electrons in the P side at thermal equilibrium? Thermal equilibrium means that VA is zero. So no voltage has been applied across P and diode. So originally, how much electron concentration were available in the P side? Then, depending on the voltage that you have applied, the electron concentration in the P side can be increased by what? Increased at an exponential pace because of this term, right, exponential. So if you increase your uh, voltage, applied voltage across P and diode, V sub A, uh, increasing, increasing V A, then you, you may expect the minority carrier concentration in the P side, which is the electron concentration in the P side, should be exponentially increased. And even more specifically, if your VA is uh, KT over Q times what? So uh, this number, 
So say KT over Q at room temperature is 26 millivolt. So suppose that you have applied 260 millivolt, 0.26 volt as a forward bias. Then uh, the electron concentration in the P side has should increased compare against the electron concentration at thermal equilibrium by exponential to the 10, okay? That is approximately 2.7 to the 10, approximately 3 to 10. And then you know how much uh, abrupt uh, increase of the minority carrier concentration when you simply apply point, 0 0.26 volt across P and I, okay? So uh, the basic understanding in uh, diode physics is when you apply or the externally applied voltage is linearly increased, then carrier's concentration should be exponentially increased. So that is always ap applicable whenever you're doing the analysis for IDR PM junction diode. Okay. All right. Okay, going back to the original goal for this uh, slide, we would like to know the excess carrier concentration. So excess carrier concentration in the P side should be this, delta, delta N sub P. So delta N sub P is NP minus NP now, right? Compare against the electron concentration in the P side at normal equilibrium, how much electron concentration, uh, how many electrons are more created or more available in the P side? So we would like to know the difference. That is the main reason I have used this term, excess carrier concentration, okay? So now we are ready to write down the equation for excess carrier concentration in the P side. So delta N sub P, is NP minus NP naught, and what was NP? Yes, here, NP is equal to what? Yeah, this guy. So NP naught, exponential, QVA over KT, minus what? Yeah, again, another NP naught. So NP naught is common, so NP naught times exponential QVA over KT minus one. But this MP now was defined as what? Yes, there we go. And I scare over NA, right? That is NP naught. So instead of MP naught, we can write down NI square NA exponential QVA over KT minus one. Uh -oh. Okay, all right. So you can repeat all the steps that I have done for P side to obtain the excess carrier concentration in the N side. Just for your information, let's do it quickly. So to obtain the excess carrier concentration in the N side, let's estimate how much electron concentration in the N side the edge of the depletion layer. So N sub N is equal to N sub N naught because of the low level injection. So N sub N naught was defined as ND. Donor's concentration would govern the majority carrier concentration at thermal equilibrium. So NN is equal to ND. Okay. Now, next one is P sub N, the minority carrier concentration in the N site, which is P sub N, right? So P sub N, now we can use law of the junction p sub n times n oops p sub n times n sub n is equal to n i square exponential q v a over k t so n sub n it was was n d right so p sub n is equal to n i square n d because this is n d so you see movie here exponential QVA over KT. Okay, so NI square over ND, so you can use a mass action law again. And 
n naught times p n naught is equal to n i square. This is my session law. And n and naught was n d. Therefore, the p n naught is equal to n i square over n sub d. Okay, so now this value is identical to this. So p sub n is equal to p sub n naught times exponential q v a over k t. Okay. So there we go, Pn is equal to Pn naught times exponential QVA over Kt. So now we, we are ready to obtain the equation for excess care concentration in the n side, which is delta P sub n. So delta P sub n is equal to Pn minus Pn naught. And the Pn was what? Yeah, this. So Pn naught exponential QVA over Kt minus p and naught and now p and naught is common so you can take it as a common term then instead of p and naught here p and naught you can plug in ni over ni square over nd so here instead of n p and naught ni square over nd then this delta pn is equal to ni square over nd times exponential qva over kt minus 1 that is written here in okay all right so now in this slide you can estimate you can write down your own equation for excess carrier concentration in either side of p and i delta n sub p or delta p sub n so just for your homework uh just a you're taking kind of a just an optional homework. You don't need to uh, hand out your own answer sheet for homework. Just so for your information, try to solve this example, carry injection. So for a given PN junction diode, and sub A is 10 to the 18. I mean, the, in the P side, the majority carrier hole concentration is identical to the N sub A. And here N sub D means uh, electron, concentra electron concentration in the N side. Okay, and externally applied voltage V sub A is equal to 0 0.6 volt. Then you can solve those uh, two different questions. Please do that. Then you can uh, get some kind of small feeling. Ah, how much excess carrier concentration has been uh, obtained by simply applying 0 0.6 volt? Very small, tiny amount of voltage has been applied across PN diode. However, in terms of excess carrier concentration, you know, you're going to expect uh, more than billion, right? Thousand billion uh, uh, electron concentration and whole concentration. So please do that. All right. Now, uh, it's a good time to check where we, where we are uh, in doing ideal diode analysis. So for that purpose, let's move back to the slide for this ideal diode analysis. Previously, I mentioned that there are three main steps. Number one, step number one was to solve the minority carrier diffusion equations. Did we solve the minority carrier diffusion equations actually? No, not yet. But this delta n sub p and delta p sub n. Now, excess carrier concentration those two excess carrier con concentration can be written with a certain you know, equation uh, that was found in this slide, right? Delta here, n sub p and delta p sub n. But as a function of x and applied voltage. But this equation is only valid when x is minus xp, right? Okay. So now to solve the excess carrier concentration, so let's move on to the next one here in, uh, you can find out the answer, right? The excess carrier, con excess carrier concentration in the N side has been written as X and VA, as a function of X and VA. Previously, the thing that we have obtained is actually delta p 
he access carrier concentration in the end side, but at the very specific position. Okay, not for all x. Okay, so by solving the minority carrier diffusion equation, second order differential equation, we would like to know the delta p sub n as a function of x. Blah blah blah. Of course, one more variable that is applied voltage. So V A would be included here, X would be included here. But interestingly, if you take a look at the solution and the final destination that we would like to go is, instead of X, here the authors has used this X prime. So we need to understand what the meaning of the X prime first. So take a look at the cross-sectional view of the PN diode again here. Originally, I used the X of zero at the metallurgical or physical junction between P material and N material. And right-hand side is defined as plus X, left-hand side is defined as minus X. But think, uh, think about the, how the holes and electrons are moved. Here, many holes are available in the P side. Once for the bias is applied, many holes are diffused injected into the end side and they are going to uh, be diffused out. And what about here? Uh, there are many electrons available in the end side and once forward bias is applied, many electrons are injected into the P side. Afterwards, it is going to be diffused out. So in terms of how carriers are moved away, they are very similar. I mean, hole is diffused away, diffused out, and the electrons are diffused away and out. So same, right? The only different thing is hole or electron. Other than that, everything is identical. So instead of using a single plus X coordinate system, let's take two different new, I mean, let's take a new coordinate system. So now the depletion edge is defined as a new origin point, x of zero. But instead of x, now let's use a x prime to, you know, to differentiate from x itself. So here x prime is zero. And this direction is defined as plus x prime. So similarly, the edge of the depletion layer in the P side is defined as X of zero, but in, to avoid any misconception, let's use X two prime. And uh, the direction for electrons to diffuse away, diffuse out, uh, is plus X two prime, okay? So this is a new coordinate system for P side, and that is another new coordinate system for N side. However, in terms of how carriers, access carriers are moved, those two new coordinate systems are quite equivalent, okay? Now, let's uh, keep an eye on how holes are moved away and diffused out in the end side. So previously, we have learned the continuity equation, how uh, the carriers are continuously moving and diffused, right? So if not, if you have missed those parts, please uh, review uh, what the continuity equation is. And from that, we have derived minority carrier diffusion equation, which was uh, described on the top line in this lecture note. Take a look at here. Uh, the access carrier concentration Again, excess delta carrier, minority carrier, hole concentration in the end side uh, is uh, well described with this uh, second order differential equation. So delta P sub N, if you take a difference, take a difference two times, you're going to get your own, uh, own value, but divided by LP square. And actually, LP square is identical to the diffusion constant times lifetime. So this LP is defined as square root delta dp times tau p. 
for, if you take a look at the unit for this, and that is defined as diffusion lengths, okay? So the physical meaning of diffusion lengths is, uh, suppose, that there, suppose that there is a minority carrier in the sea of the majority carriers. Definitely recombination would be happened sooner or later. And how, how long, how long, or on average, how long the minority carriers can survive without recombining with majority carriers in the sea of the majority carriers. That is defined as a, you know, a diffusion length. So how, how long a single minority carriers can move without any recombination with majority carriers, okay? That is defined as the physical you know, diffusion lengths. Okay, so once you know the diffusion lengths, you can build up this minority carrier diffusion equation. So now we are ready to solve this uh, second order differential equation. So as you have learned in the mathematics class, dy, the second uh, dy over dx is equal to y divided by a certain constant, then its general solution should be a one times exponential uh, x divided by a certain constant plus a two exponential minus x divided by a certain constant. Okay, so this is a general solution form for this uh, second order differentiation. So uh, here in the solution is of the form this right so the here the constant is corresponding to the c square with the c actually because i have used the lp square here so if uh, oh, where's my pen oh, there we go if the, that is denoted uh described with the c square and this uh, square box should be c okay so now uh this second order differentiation has the same format of this minority carrier's diffusion equation. So the solution delta p sub n should be a one coefficient times exponential x over the LP plus a two exponential minus x prime over LP. Okay, so now it's time to look for the coefficient a one and a two. How? Whenever solving the differentiation, we, we should develop the boundary conditions. So now the hole are injected into the N side and it's going to be diffused away. What is the boundary condition? Yes, here and when X prime uh, at X prime of zero and when X prime of infinity. Uh, there we go, two boundary conditions. If x prime is infinity, I mean the here, very long, long away from the edge of the depletion layer, uh, these injected holes would get into more and more. But however, there are many, many tons of electrons are available here because this is anti-material. So most of the, I mean, about 100, almost 100% 100 of holes injected into the end side from P side should be recombined completely with uh, electrons so that uh, how many holes would be survived or would be alive at x of infinity you can simply say that there is no holes available no holes to be survived at x of infinity because this is very long long i mean the this uh, physical side length of the quasi neutral region I mean, the L, how to say, just the quasi neutral reasons lengths should be much, much longer than L sub P. I mean, the diffusion lengths of hole, injected hole. So all the uh, holes injected into the N side would be recombined with electrons. So no more holes available at X prime of infinity. Okay. So that is one boundary condition to solve this uh, minor carry diffusion equation. So here, x prime when x prime is infinity, delta p sub n is asymptotically approaching to zero. Okay. What about the other boundary condition? Yes, there we go. 
when x prime is zero, that is equivalent to when x is x sub n, right? So here, what was it? This guy, where does it come from? We have already developed it. Let's go back to the slide here in. Yes, delta p sub n when x is xn. That is identical to x prime is zero. So at x prime of zero, delta p sub n is equal to what? Yes, this. You know the n sub i, you know the doping concentration, you know how much uh, voltage you have applied. So this is kind of constant, right? I mean the, the known value, right? So here in delta p sub n at x prime of zero, delta p sub n x prime of zero is equal to p n naught times exponential q v a over k t minus one. That is kind of constant, right? So now we got two boundary conditions at x prime of zero or at x prime of infinity. So plug in here. When x prime is zero, uh, the left hand side is equal to p and naught exponential q v a over k t minus one. Okay, and plug in the infinity here and there, and the left hand side should be zero. So using these uh, two boundary conditions, you can estimate a one and a two two coefficients. So more details can be provided here. Again, on the top, you can see the general solution form for minor security fusion equation. When x prime is infinity, that is identical to the x prime is infinity. Uh, plug in here, infinity, infinity minus, and infinity, and this value should be zero. So zero is equal to a1 times exponential plus infinity plus a2 times exponential minus infinity. Actually, this exponential minus infinity should go to the zero. What about this guy? Exponential plus infinity. That is moving toward the infinity. But left hand side is zero. And that is going to infinity. So that A1 should be zero, right? So A1 should be zero. Otherwise, we can never satisfy this boundary condition. Okay, so it turned out that A1 is zero. Let's use the second boundary condition when x of xn. In other words, when at x prime of zero, so plug in, let me raise it. Plug in, in uh, actually a1 is zero, so you can ignore this first term, actually. And here, plug in x prime of zero, plug in uh, zero value for x prime. So delta p sub n, zero is equal to a2 times exponential to the minus zero exponential to the zero is equal to one so a2 times one okay so that is actually a2 so a2 is equal to what yes delta p sub n at x prime of zero so a2 is equal to what again p delta p n zero but what was it delta p n Yes, there we go. Here, delta delta p n at x of x n means at x prime of zero. So delta p n x prime is zero is equal to what? Kind of constant. So bring that kind of constant to here. Okay, delta p sub when x prime is zero is kind of constant. All right, so a2 is this. So now you can plug in into this a1. Then let's erase it again. Then a1 is zero, so you can ignore this term and a2, instead of a2, you can plug in here, okay? So p and naught times exponential qva over kt minus one times this guy. Okay, so delta p n as a function of x prime is equal to p and naught exponential qva over kt minus one. That is actually p 
delta Pn when x prime is 0 times what? Exponential minus x prime over Lp, this guy. Okay? All right, we have solved the magnetic diffusion in the end. Delta P sub n is equal to, you know, at thermal equilibrium in the n side, how much holes are available and how much voltage you have applied and uh, what is the diffusion length of the minority carry in the n side, actually hold, holes diffusion length in the n side. Then you're going to end up with this equation. So we have solved minority carry diffusion equation in the n side. Once hole is injected into the whole n side, how those holes are diffused into the n side. And whatever the position is as a function of x prime and how much voltage you have applied, delta p sub n x comma v a is defined is found as here. This right. So let me write. Delta Pn as a function of x and Va is equal to Pn naught times exponential QVA over Kt minus 1 times exponential minus x over Lp. But actually, I have used the x prime here. But if you stick on the x coordinate, you can do this. Actually, x prime is shifted to the left hand side by what? Yes, by xn. So if you would like to use x original x coordinate system instead of x prime you here in x minus x n okay so if i write down it again clearly uh, delta p n as a function of x comma v a is equal to p n naught exponential q v a over k t minus one times exponential minus x minus xn over Lp, okay? x minus xn over Lp, okay? So now we got the full uh, equation for delta P sub n as a function of x comma Va. What was it? Let's go back to the ideal diode analysis. Here, Yes, delta P sub n as a function of x and v a. Okay, so we all done for the very first step number one. Okay, and uh, you can repeat these uh, these steps for how the electrons are diffused away in the p side. I'm talking about this. Electrons are injected into the N side and it is going to be diffused to, into in the P side. This movement is quite similar how the hole is diffused away in the N side. So we have solved uh, the minor carry diffusion equation for holes in the N side. But now it's time to solve the minor carry diffusion equation for electrons in the n side so you can repeat it and similarly we can derive delta n sub p x2 prime is equal to mp naught exponential qva over kt minus 1 exponential minus x2 prime over l sub n if it is if you feel hard to derive it so simply do this work Instead of P, switch into N. Instead of N, switch into P. Instead of X prime, you can use another new coordinate system, X2 prime. What was it? Yes, this, X2 prime, which is quite similar to the X prime coordinate system, okay? Instead of P, use N. Instead of N, use P. Normal equilibrium, still kept, and same. And instead of x prime, use x2 prime. Instead of whole diffusion length, now we are talking about the electrons movement. So you can use uh, electron diffusion length, L sub n. 
okay so everything is quite similar and everything is quite complementary okay so once you know the delta p sub n excess carrier concentration in the inside you can simply derive another excess carrier concentration in the p side in the same coordinate actually uh, effectively effectively same coordinate system okay so step number one here step number one has been done completed now it's time to solve the step number two and step number three so i guess it's a good time to pause my movie clip here and if you have any point you didn't follow up and you didn't catch up please go back to the movie clip the right momentum in this movie clip or you should look for the paragraphs and sentences corresponding to the point that you missed okay so please do that and see you in the next movie clip okay thank you bye bye